we were working in the in the motor driver and we made a whole bunch of motors and put them into the list so all motors just happens to be a list of more than one motor and notice when i choose a variable name for that thing i'm trying to choose a variable name that emphasizes the point that there's a bunch of things that that variable is keeping track of rather than just one of so we made a single student is a motor b motor right they've got singular words and i'm trying to think of a word that makes it obvious when we've got a whole bunch of things and so you'll see that this just happens to be my convention right is i don't want to just say motors because then the s sort of hides where it's tough to see on the end of the word so i put all or some word on the front that tries to emphasize the fact that there's a bunch of them Okay. So most of my lists will be named with something like that that tries to make it obvious that there's, there's more than one. So we added, added the motors to the list. We showed that you could use four each to go through. And we've been getting progressively more complicated because what we've been doing with our four each's is now we've added an if statement inside to filter it rather than printing out all of them. So we've just selected a few to print out. Then we selected two conditions uh, instead of one for things to show you an easy way to do that um, and then that was just another another filter there uh, to go and make this one's to make a separate list so we started out and we made a brand new list that's going to hold the motors that we're interested in and we basically copied that information from the ones that matched onto the separate list Okay, so after you've done this loop, those things appear on both lists. And the lists are totally independent. So if you remove from one of the lists, it still remains on the other. So it's just like address books, right? I had all these people in one address book, and I wanted to just pull out the people who were in Comp 132 into a separate address book, but all of the original people are still there. If I remove somebody from the one Comp 132 address book, it's still in the other person's address book. Okay, so that's really the sort of idea of what we're doing with these lists. And that's really quite a normal thing to do. Usually you have a list of everything possible and you're continually extracting just the pieces that you need and making a separate list and then doing something with that separate list temporarily. Okay, so we showed this is just a, there was a for each at the end that printed out something from a different list so that you could see that that's the thing that changes and then our last problem was to see whether or not we could find the motor that was in the worst condition, as in had the most number of hours of usage on it. And the way we did that is really exactly the way that you would do it in real life. We went along and we said, let's go grab the first thing out of the pile of motors. So let's just go grab the, the number zero guy out of the pile. That means that now we have to go through the rest of the pile which is what that says, start with the number one motor and do all of the rest of them. Go grab the next one out of the pile and then check the hours on each of the motors. So we just put those into separate variables. So I've got the one that I think is the, the, the worst motor and I've got this other motor that could be worse. And so I grab the hours out of each of them so that I've got some number that I can look at directly. And then I compare the hours on the one that I just pulled out of the pile from the hours that's the biggest so far. And if for some reason this one is worse, then I say, well, that's now the biggest motor or the one that's in the worst condition. And notice here that the thing that I'm keeping track of is not the number of hours, but it's the actual motor that I'm holding in my hand and saying, I think this is the worst one. Because if you hold on to the motor as the worst one, then you hold on to everything about the motor rather than just holding a number you're only referring to one piece of what's actually in the motor okay so in java the thing is to go grab the motor and not just the piece of the thing okay so eventually what you end up with is the one that you've seen that's the biggest so far and so at this point biggest so far has become the actual biggest Right? There's no doubt that it's the biggest anymore. So this variable name is okay here 
But once you reach the end of the loop and you've actually got the biggest so far, it's not the biggest so far, it really is the biggest. Okay? And so I'm going to do something here that's sort of interesting. I'm going to say motor actual biggest equals biggest so far, and then uh, biggest motor so far. And then I'm going to print out actual biggest there. Why did I do that? It's just a name change. I've just changed the name of the variable into a different name to try to give people the idea that, well, here I was thinking of it as I wasn't sure whether or not it was the biggest. But by the time I got to here and I've done some work, I know that it's the biggest now. Okay? And the reason for that is if you were to continue to use that biggest so far variable on, you still get the sense that there's another one bigger coming along, and there isn't. I'm done at this point. Okay? This is another one of these things that people who are coding, who have been taught or who have been doing it for longer than five years, would never do that. And they would say, oh, that's making another variable, and another variable takes up more room, and that's, that's a problem for computers. Well, it's not a problem for computers anymore. Okay? The extra storage space that that takes up is negligible in the modern computing world. And not only that, the compiler will probably take care of making that, quote, extra variable go away at some point and just using the one that it already knows about. Okay? So it's not really costing the computer anything in terms of cycles, but it re-emphasizes the point of something that's happening in your program. Okay? So don't be afraid to do that. If for some reason the usage of the variable changes and you have a better idea of what it is later on in the program, you want to use it for something else, some other purpose, then that's a fine thing to do. Just change the name and keep on going. And so now it's got two names. It's called biggest so far, and it's called actual biggest. And they're really the same thing. They refer to the same object. OK? So there we go. Now we've managed to pick out biggest so far. OK, the next issue that we had with this thing is I said, look at who's doing all the work. It's the main program, or me, that's got to go when I'm trying to compare two motors, go, well, let's see, I've got to talk to you and find out you know, what value do you have. I've got to talk to this motor and find out what value it has. I have to do the comparison myself to figure out which number I think is bigger. I'm doing all the work. And being a lazy sort of guy, I'd prefer not to do all of the work. I'd prefer to push the work down and let other people handle it. Okay? And this is a very normal Java thing to do. It's also a very normal middle manager thing to do. I don't want to do the work. But that's what employees are for. Okay? So you can think of all of these objects as being employees, these things that you make, and go, well, how can I get them to do more work? Well, the answer is, rather than me extracting the information from them, why don't I get them to talk amongst themselves, figure out which one of them is better, and one of them can tell me. Okay? And now all I have to do is say, hey, I'm going to introduce you to you, and you tell me which one of you two is bigger. I'll take your word for it, and we'll move on. And the second advantage of that is I'm no longer interested in how they compare themselves. I'm saying, well, your motor is your best at figuring out what motors do and what makes one better or worse than another. So go ahead. You two do it, and then just tell me which is the better one. Okay? So I'm not involved in the decision-making process. I'm just going to take whatever result they get. Okay? So in this case, the thing that the motors are using for comparison is their hours of service. Okay? And so what I want to do is I want to go into the motor class, and I want to provide something that will do a comparison on hours of service. Okay? So here's the sneaky part. Let's give it a name. Uh, we'll call it uh, public. Uh, I don't know what value it returns. Uh, 
compare to another. If I'm if I've already got a motor in hand and I'm saying I want you to compare to that person, what's the argument that I'm going to put in here? This is already a motor. And so the thing that I'm comparing against is another motor, somebody else. Okay? So I'm taking this person as a motor, and I'm introducing that other motor to them, and I'm saying, talk to him, figure it out. Okay? So it looks a little strange because we're in the motor class. But that's because we're playing the role of just one motor, and what we're handed over is another motor to talk to. Okay, so that solves that little problem for a moment. Okay, so now let's talk about the value that I'm going to return back, and it's easier here to think of people's weight. Okay, if I'm comparing myself to somebody else and I want to find out who's bigger, how do I do the comparison? Well, you can either what, what, uh, values, what values do I use? How do I know if, if by weight if I'm bigger than you are? Well, by comparing. By comparing what exactly? What, what value for people? For weight. Uh, weight, pounds of weight, okay, or something to do with weight. So what's the calculation? I say, I'm 200 pounds, you're, you know, 190 pounds. The difference between us is plus 10 pounds in my favor, and so if I do the subtraction and I get a positive number, it means I'm bigger than you are, okay? On the other hand, if I compare my weight to your weight, if I'm 200 pounds and you're 250 pounds, and I do 200 minus 250, I get a negative number, and the negative number, when I see a negative number, that says, oh, I'm not as big as he is. And the advantage of the subtraction is that it also tells me the magnitude of the difference. So it doesn't just say true or false, am I bigger or not, it specifically says here is how much bigger I am. Okay, so the interesting thing in that case is that what you get back from a comparison is not true or false, but it's a number that describes how much bigger. Okay, so if we get a zero back, that means we're both the same size. If we get a positive number back, it means I'm bigger than you are, and if I do the subtraction and I get a negative number, it means that you're bigger than I am. Okay. So now it becomes fairly simple. The difference between these two motors is what? What did we do in the, in the driver? The number that we thought was interesting was hours of service. So for this motor, hours of service is just that variable. minus, what's the other guy's hours of service? Another dot get. So another dot get hours of service. So ask the other guy. So it's no different than the main program. If I'm a motor, I just turn around and give them another motor, I can still call their get routine and get their hours of service. And so now that I've got the difference, then I'm just going to send that value back. Okay? And I put that there as a separate variable so that we can go use the debugger to inspect what that actual difference is as we're going through and trying this thing out. Okay? So all that I did is this is the same calculation as the outside world. I've just moved it in here. And so now what happens is I don't have to do this calculation anymore. 
what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say difference equals the current motor, which is biggest so far, dot, if I save it, it'll give it to me, dot, come on, oh, biggest motor so far, no wonder, dot, compared to another motor, and I'm going to give it here, the next one. Okay, so just give me the difference between you two. And then if the difference is bigger than well careful here. When we did the calculation, it said zero meant we were the same. A positive number meant that I was bigger than you were, and a negative number meant that you were bigger than I was. So if I get a positive number, that means that the biggest one so far, so I got this calculation wrong, I'm just going to flip this guy around and I'm going to say if the next one compared to biggest so far I'm going to do it that way. So I'm going to compare the new guy against the one that I thought was the biggest. And if the new guy is bigger, meaning I get a positive number from him, so greater than zero, then that means that's the biggest motor so far. Okay. Now, just let me take this thing and put it in here and show you the way that I would read it. Okay, and we'll just ignore that difference variable so far. So when you see this next one compared to this guy, the easiest way to read it is to just pretend you're taking this greater than sign and moving it over top of this word. Because then what you get if next one bigger than biggest motor so far then it's the biggest. Okay, So you can sort of ignore the fact that it's positive and negative numbers coming back from this thing as long as you can play that little mind game and just put the greater than sign over top of that word. Okay, That's all there is to it to decide on bigger versus smaller. And the same thing when you write, when you write them. Okay. And this is biggest so far. Biggest motor so far. Okay, so that's a sneaky little trick. So even when I see this line here, when I see difference there, I say, okay, well that's next one greater than biggest so far. So if the next one is greater than the biggest so far, then it's got to be the new biggest one. Okay, so it should still produce the same thing as it did uh, yesterday. Oops, what's that gobbledygook? When I go to print out a motor, why did that come out? It's coming from this line. Worst is actual biggest. So what's wrong with actual biggest that it produced that gobbledygook? don't have a two string. So remember when you use that variable in, in a, a print statement, since it's not an integer, you have to have written a two string to decide how you're gonna how you're gonna print it out. So let's go back into motor and we'll just quickly put in a two string just to remind you. So here's a two string, it's gonna send back a string. Easiest way to do that is to make up an empty string to start with. and send back the empty string. Okay. So by the way, this is a little trick for when you've got 
a function or a method that's supposed to return a value, the sneakiest thing you can do for yourself is make a value that's wrong or empty, return that thing, and then go into the middle and say to yourself, well, what's it supposed to be? It works now, it's just broken, so now we'll fix the brokenness and say, well, I guess we need to add to result uh, the uh, serial number I'm going to put it in quotes. And the I, so there's the string that represents serial number plus serial number plus the other stuff. Um, what's the other one? Let's do it this way and I'll get it. Uh, maximum hours before service. So I'll steal that word and put it in here so I know what that variable is. And then one more variable. Um, plus actual hours of service. said about here. Oh, those are semicolons because those are separate lines. Okay, so every one is just a pair of the variable name plus the actual variable value. Okay, so we'll save that. We'll run our driver program. And uh, the worst motor is uh, C. I guess I'll fix up my print statement to just include another. Oh no, that's right. Just got long names. Okay, so there's a, a motor number with the serial number of C, and it's got the 304 hours, which is the worst. Okay, so there's a sample two string just to remind you how to do a two string for the printout. Okay, so now we've got this comparison routine all set to go, and notice that the motor is no longer interested in, or the driver is no longer interested in how motors compare themselves. Don't care. Okay, well, let's talk about uh, compare two here. Okay, this seems like a handy feature. It seems like a sneaky way of doing things. <coughs> if we have something like student as a class, if a student wrote a compare to, then the student class might say, we'll compare ourselves by GPA. Okay? I still don't need to know when I write a driver program to pick out the biggest student because I'm just asking students. Okay? So the advantage of this code is that as long as whoever we're talking to has got that compared to another method in it, that code works for anything. Because it could be student compared to another student, it could be just anything that you want. Okay, so this seems like a handy feature to have. And it turns out that Java allows you to do that, or the libraries allow you to do that. And the trick is, is that it's not actually called compared to another motor, it's just called compare to. So I'm going to get rid of that thing and just call it what Java actually calls it. Okay, and so the driver program, you'll now see it as this one compared to that one. Okay, we know that we're calling it in our code, it's pretty obvious that it's being called because if we put a breakpoint inside this comparison routine, and run with the debugger. There's the call to compare to, and it's coming from main right there. So nice and easy to see. 
Okay. Well, it turns out that once you decide that that's a standard thing, then somebody comes along and says, just let me take this code since it's now generic and let me put it into a library of code that you can use. And so that's what they've done. So in the driver program, instead of writing all of that code, what you can do now is you can call this library the collections library, and it happens to have a maximum. And the thing that you give it is a bunch of things, so a list of things. So if I give it all motors, it will essentially run all of the code that we've just seen, and what it will give back to me is the biggest motor. Okay, so that's how it's called. Give me the maximum of a bunch of things. Okay, and it's got that capital on the front because it's not an actual ob object, it's just a library. So it's library dot, here's the function that I want to call, or the method that I want to call. And in that case, it's a maximum of what? Of hours? Or? The interesting thing, the question was, is it maximum of hours or maximum of what? The interesting thing is you don't know. And really, you don't care. Because all you're after is the biggest. And biggest there is in the normal way that you're using it for the program. So, for instance, the normal way that I would use biggest for students is to order them by GPA. The normal way that you would uh, 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 use people if they were entries in the telephone book is alphabetically. Okay, so the one way, the normal way that you do things really sorts of depends on your application. But you only get one normal way because we only have one comparison routine so far. We're going to find out later how to do comparisons against different things, but for now you're stuck with whatever they decide to use. Now, so that's a detriment because you don't know what it is. But it's an advantage because now you can just go get what somebody else thinks is the biggest without really caring. So hockey players, if I've got a bunch of hockey players and I want to find the best, I run collections.max on the best, and the hockey players themselves decide what best means. Works for me. Okay? If there's some reason why I think I know better, there's a way of doing that. I can go out and talk to the hockey players themselves and get the information from them, but this works in a lot of cases. Now, notice that there's an error there. And it gives you some nasty, nasty message that's totally incomprehensible, which is a tradition for compiler messages going back way back. Especially right? So the issue with this thing is you look at it and you go, I don't know what that means. Here's the translation of this thing. Translation is, if you, wanna, if you want me to find the maximum of a bunch of hockey players, the hockey player class had better have a comparison routine in it. Notice we added it, and we had to add it specially, like two string to get it to function properly. If you don't have one there, you can't call hockey player compare to another, so it's not going to work. Okay, so what this thing is really saying is you have to announce to me in some fashion that this facility is available inside this class so that I can use it. And the way you make the announcement is you go into the motor class right at the top and you say implements comparable for motor. Okay, so this, if this was student, it would be class student would implement comparable for student. If it were hockey player, it would be class hockey player implements comparable against other hockey players. Okay, specifically against hockey players. All that this thing says is that somewhere inside the class, that compare to function will exist. So it's just a preliminary announcement to say, Hey, I can do this. Right? Is that an important it's it's important because collections.max is smart enough to know that it needs that. And notice now that as soon as we announce it, 
the error goes away. So it's not sufficient for compare to to just write it. You have to have to put up the big flag on the front of the class that says, hey, look, it's in here. It really is. It's in here. Okay? You have to do both things in order for this to work. Okay? Now, if you do that, I'm just going to copy that line there, and I'm going to print out biggest. And we'll just run it and see. And now we should have it printed out twice, if I can see it. There we are. The first time is from me going and finding it with my code, and the second one with, is with collections.max doing all the work. Okay, so now all of a sudden we've got a really useful facility. Okay. Um, what else have we got in this thing? Well, it turns out that I can also find the smallest. And guess what smallest is? Collections.min. If you don't believe me that this thing actually gets used, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just temporarily comment out my code that specifically called it. By the way, the way that you comment out code, the easiest way, is that under source, there's add block comment. We'll just comment out the whole thing for you. Okay? So now I'm not calling compare to. Motor still has the breakpoint in it. Let's just debug the driver. There's compare to that's being called. And if you look up in the stack trace, the main program at this line called collections.max, and collections.max is making use of the compare to for motor in order to do its job. And so there we are stuck with the compare to. The values that are being compared will be the first two things, just like we did. Grab the zero one off the list, grab the number one off the list, let them talk to each other to decide who it is. So if we look at the this value, there's one of the motors. And if we look at the another value, There's motor A. So it's comparing motor A to motor B, the first two off the list, in order to figure out which one of those two is bigger. And it's going to play the same game. It's going to take the biggest one, and it's going to use that to do another compare to. And it's going to keep going along, always holding up the biggest and comparing it to the next one down the list. Okay. So there's your proof that now that we've written it, that thing is using it. Okay. Well, sometimes you don't want just the biggest. Sometimes you want them in order. To put them in order, turns out that our friend the collections library has a whole bunch of things it can do, but the handiest one for us at this point <coughs> is sort. And you have to give it a list of things, which is the entire set of motors. If you say, I want to sort it, it's going to totally rearrange the order and put it in a different order. How does it decide what order? It doesn't decide. It lets the motors decide. And so these things are going to come out in sorted by hours of usage whatever that happens to be. Stud of interest sake. What do you think happens if I use all motors in a print statement? It's got three motors on it. What would you expect the list to do if I say I want to print out the list? You'd expect to see 
not just one of them, but all of them. So if we run this thing, see this last line here? There's, it's printing out the first one, the brackets are to say I'm printing out a list of things. So there's the first one, the second one, and the third one. It turns out they're already uh, sort of in or hours of service order. So we didn't gain anything by doing that, but you can sort them. Okay, so min and max don't disturb the list. It leaves them in the same order. But if you say collections dot sort, it's specifically going to arrange them into highest or lowest to highest. What happens if if it does it lowest by highest, lowest to highest? What happened if you wanted them the other way around, highest to lowest? Well, the list is already in sorted order. So if you do collections dot reverse, and then we run this thing, now it goes in reverse order from worst to best. Would you always have to put sort in first or no? Yes. Well, no, reverse can be used Anywhere. Anywhere. Oh, but okay. if you reverse it and they're not in sorted order, yeah. you just get them in arbitrary reversed order. Mm -hmm. So that's fairly typical. You sort them to get them from smallest to highest, and then you flip the entire list around to get them from highest to lowest. Now, you do have to be careful with the motor class about writing this thing, this compare to, is always my value against your value. Okay? You can flip it around, but if you do the subtraction the other way, it changes the sense of the comparison to be you versus me rather than me versus you. If you do that, what will happen is it will still sort, you'll still get, if you flip it around, you now get basically highest to lowest. You would think that that's a good idea. Okay, now I have the option. I can either do lowest to highest or highest to lowest just by flipping the compare to. You have to be careful with that because the way that collections.max works is it always assumes that the biggest is on the right-hand side, right? Just like a number line. So it always assumes, min always assumes I'm going to pick the smallest from the zero item, and I'm always going to pick the maximum from the endmost item. If you change the sense of your comparison to do you versus me, because you want highest to lowest, you get highest to lowest, but now when you say minimum, minimum gives you the one on the left-hand side, which looks like the biggest. Got that? If you flip one thing around, then the other gets flipped around, but min and max stay where they are, and so you're in weird shape. Okay? So the, the bottom line of this is always do compare to with me versus you. That always means that when you sort things, you always get lowest to highest, and then if for some reason you ever need them in the other order, you just use reverse to turn it around to get it into the other order and then everybody's consistent in the, in the behavior that they do. Okay, um, Let's talk about this announcement for a second, because we're going to use it in a, in a, bunch, of, a bunch of cases. Okay? Um, that announcement, the way I think of it, is it's like putting a sign on the door. Right? If you put a sign on the door that says Spanish spoken here, you're telling people who are about to enter the room something about what they can say inside. You're saying there's a whole bunch of words that are now available to you that you didn't know you could use before by virtue of that sign being out there. Okay? So that's all that that announcement does. It just puts the sign on the front of the door and it says there's a guarantee that there's a Spanish speaker inside. Okay? What happens if you don't put the sign on the door? It could still work, right? Somebody could still open up the door and speak something in Spanish, and if there was a Spanish speaker, things would just work. 
Okay, so it's not necessary to make the announcement. You can try to use the feature without it being there, but if it's not, bad things are going to happen. Okay, so the idea of putting the announcement on the door is that people, when they go by, now know right away. Okay, so that's why even though we wrote compare to, you know, it was fine to write it, but until we put the announcement on the door, collections.max is ignoring us and saying, I'm not going to go in there because there's no sign on the door. Okay? So that's how that thing, that thing works. And because we're promising something, you can actually use at override on this also. Or, well, let's try it this way. If you spell it wrong, it's now not called compare to, it's called something else. So if you don't get it right, then that thing complains and says, no, 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 hold it. You put the sign on the door that said you were going to write that thing, but you didn't. It's something totally different. Okay? So it works that way. To be doubly sure, what you'll often see people do is they'll put add override on the front of this thing to say, I'm planning on writing something that I promised up top. And the same with two string, just to make sure, we'll usually put add override on the top of that one to say, I'm expecting that there's already one there. Okay, so implements comparable means I'm going to add to something that's already there. I'm going to or something that's not there. I'm going to provide a feature. Okay, in this case, the ability to, to sort. It just hap happens to have a different name. Comparable means I got to compare two inside. Okay, so now all of a sudden, by adding that one little tiny method in there, we gain sorting for free. Okay, min, max, sort, all of those wonderful things that you normally like to use. Almost every list that you make nowadays that you see is sorted in some particular order, right? And so to be able to do that conveniently is something that you want to provide. So now what happens is every time you write a class, the next time I say write a class for a lab exercise, I'm going to make you automatically put some sort of compare to in it so that now we have this additional feature. So this now becomes the burden of when you write a class is starting to grow. You gotta write a constructor, you gotta write getters and setters, you gotta write a two string, and now to finish it to help finish it off, you should really write a comparison routine, because now we're building a big thing that somebody can use for all sorts of purposes. Okay? But we're not done yet. We've got one more thing that I'm just gonna introduce here and then we'll actually finish it off in tomorrow's class. So, we've got this idea of being able to put the list in order. I'm going to uncomment this so it's source, remove block comment, select and get rid of it. So, there's the easy way to comment and uncomment code. Okay. One last little topic. We've now we've sorted things in order and we can find the biggest and the smallest. Suppose that I want to ask the question. Is Fred in the class? Right? Does this is this motor on the list? Is this one you've got already? How do you go about doing that? We're comparing fields. So the traditional way of doing searching that you would see would be to sort of reuse this code. Uh, actually, we'll go back and we'll reuse uh, this code with, a, with an if statement to see whether or not it exists. I'll just find the simplest one. Um, it would actually almost be something like one of the first ones we wrote. We'd go through and we'd retrieve the serial number, and then we'd say, if the serial number matches, I've found the one that I'm looking for. So let's just do that just for fun. Let's just steal this code. We'll bring it down here and we'll do <coughs> search for an item. We'll put that in there and we'll say um, uh, string Serial to find is is uh, 
we'll say we want serial number for B. Okay. And then we have something in here that says if serial to find, and we'll use dot equals there for string comparison, equals uh, the current serial number. Then we would, uh, we'll do it this way. Then we would print the serial number. And if we wanted to stop the loop, we would use break. We found the one we're looking for, let's just stop there. Okay, so that's the way that you would traditionally search for something. Here's the serial number I want to find. Let me run through all of the items on the list, dig out the serial number for each item. If I found a match, I can print that out and then I'm done. Well, what I, but I mean, if you don't find a match, then you're stuck in a loop, right? No, if you don't find a match, you'll run out of motors. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. And the, so and the, the loop will exit. And can you use complete instead of break? Uh, no, continue would get you back up to the top and you'd keep looking. As soon as you find one, you're done and you want to stop the loop. So continue takes you back up to the top to try again. Break says, I'm done, don't have to look anymore. So if you find the as the first motor, you don't have to search the other 3,000. It's just go, okay, I'm done right away. Okay, so that's the traditional way of doing things. Given what you know about compare to, what's wrong with that way of doing things? It doesn't matter about oh. time. <laughs> Who's doing all the work? The driver is doing all the work, just like we had before with compare to. The driver is having to go. Okay, this is what I want. Let me go talk to each motor in turn and say, Hey, what's your serial number? Or oh, I'll do the comparison to to find out if I've got the right one. Okay, what's a lazier way of doing that? There is a lazier way, believe it or not. Suppose, I, I, I love hockey analogies, right? So here's, here's a good one for you. You people are the Vancouver Canucks dressing room. I want to find Roberto Luongo in the dressing room, but I'm not sort of sure what he looks like, right? So one way of finding them is for me to go through and say, hey, are you Roberto, are you Roberto, are you Roberto, and do all the work of going, well, I know it's Roberto. If he's got the correct number on his jersey, oh, that must be him, right? Then that means I have to know something about hockey, and maybe I don't. The easier way to find Roberto is to go find yourself a six-year-old, buy him a Roberto Luongo jersey, and then take the six-year-old into the locker room and introduce the six-year-old to the first player and say, hey, six-year-old, is that Roberto? And, Robert, and the six-year-old compares, oh, my jersey says this. Oh, your jersey says that. You must be Roberto. Or not. If he says, oh, no, this isn't Roberto, then I take the six-year-old to the next person in line and I say, how about this one? Six-year-old does all the work of comparing jerseys. He says yes or no. He says no. I just move on. Okay? So if I can find myself a fake Roberto, somebody who looks just like Roberto as far as anybody can tell, they're wearing the same jersey, then I can get the fake one, introduce them to people all the way down the line until the fake one says, yeah, that's me right there. Okay? So what we're going to do tomorrow, after we get them the uh, the trying lab too, is we'll go and we'll write the code that makes one that looks like the one that we want, and then we'll give that one down the line to the people to let it do the comparison. Okay. See you tomorrow.